Hey guys, it's Katie with S&B, and today we're going to install our cold air intake on the 2017 to 2019 Ford Power Stroke 6.7. So let's get started. Before you get started, disconnect the negative terminal on both batteries and the positive just on the passenger side. Next, remove the battery hold down bracket and set aside the hardware because you're going to use it later. Once you get that bracket off, you can then remove the battery from the vehicle. Just make sure you keep it level. Pull out the red locking tab and remove the mass airflow sensor harness. Disconnect the hose attached to the stock intake tube. Loosen both the clamps attached to the stock intake tube. Once everything's loose or disconnected, you can then remove the stock intake tube from the vehicle. Remove the two screws securing the stock intake box to the vehicle. Remove the harness from the back of the intake box. Lift the stock air box slightly to unseat the prongs from the grommets and then remove it from the vehicle. In order to remove the stock inlet, we're first gonna remove this rivet and set it aside because we are going to reuse it later. Remove any clips that are securing the wire harness to the battery tray. There are a couple on the back of the battery tray as well. Next, you're going to remove these four screws that are securing the battery tray to the vehicle. Just make sure to set them aside because you will reuse them later. Once those are gone, you can then remove the battery tray and the front inlet from the vehicle. Now we want to remove this bracket, and in order to do that, we have to take these screws out. Remove the clips that are securing the AC line and the harness to the frame. Install the battery tray support bracket onto the frame. Line up the three holes, and then using the hardware that you had removed earlier, hand tighten those onto the outside. and using the provided hardware, hand tighten in the center. Reattach the AC line and harness clips. Go grab the stock uh, battery tray because now we need to remove the stock U-bolt. And in order to do that, we're going to remove these two screws. In order to disconnect the inlet from the battery tray, you're just going to push down on these two tabs and it should just pop right off. Once that's disconnected, you could just pop out the U-bolt. Install the factory U-bolt into the SMB battery tray. You're going to want the long side to be on the straight side and the short side to be here with the dip. And then you'll just secure it down using a zip tie. Now you need to identify if you have one or two ground cables. The primary is going to be attached to the battery terminal where the secondary is going to be over here, but you'll just leave that one alone and then you're gonna remove um, the screw attaching the primary to the frame. Once you remove the bolt, set it aside because you're gonna use it later. Install the s battery tray onto the bracket. Secure it down with the provided hardware. Use the longest one in the front. Install the remaining three, two on the bracket and the one on the fender. After you've tightened down the battery tray and you make sure it's secure, you should notice that there's plenty of room for the secondary ground. Now make sure that the screw nut and washer are secured down. Remove the stock screws. You're gonna reinstall them when you install the air box. We reinstalled the primary ground back in its original location, except this time the tab is facing out and the wires are going this way. And we torqued down the stock bolt 106 pound inches. When reinstalling the battery, install the negative terminal on the fender side and the positive on the engine side. Reinstall the factory hold down bracket and the harness and secure it down using the nuts we removed earlier. 
In order to reinstall the negative terminal onto the battery, you're going to have to take the tightening mechanism and flip it so the nut is facing up on the opposite side. Insert the bolt into the key. Take the open wedge flat side to the terminal. Closed wedge. And secure it with the bolt. Before you reinstall the negative terminal back on the post, you can take a screwdriver and open this up to give you a little bit more room. Once you have this flipped, don't install it on the post yet, and then go over to the positive and take a wrench and unscrew the nut, securing the secondary positive cable. Once you remove that nut, go ahead and set it aside because you're gonna use it later. Once it's off, you can then disconnect the cables. Some vehicles have one and some will have two. This vehicle has two, and we're just gonna extend them. If you only have one cable, the extension should look like this. And if you have two, You'll want to install it so this end is flat. Make sure to torque these down to 88 pound inches and only use one extension per wire. You don't want to double up. Slide the heat shrink over the metal to metal connection. You'll want to try and center it so nothing's exposed and then you can start to heat shrink. Double check to make sure there are no tears or metal showing and then take the second piece of heat shrink and put it over the same area and do the same process. So this is how it should look when you're all done. If you do have the second cable, you can go ahead and repeat that process. After installing the two red heat shrinks, install the fabric heat shrink over the entire cable and extension. Once it's completely covered, you can go ahead and heat shrink it. So this is what it should look like after the heat shrink is done. If you have the second cable, repeat the process separately. Install the extensions onto the terminal and reinstall the nut you took off earlier, but you're gonna leave it loose for now. Next, you're gonna disconnect this clip securing the two harnesses and then cut this zip tie. Next, you're gonna temporarily attach the positive cable to the battery and then neatly zip tie all the harnesses. And then if you needed to create a little bit more slack, you can always undo some of the electrical tape that's attaching these two together. And then just make sure to retape any exposed cable or wire after. Remember to remove the positive cable before moving on to the next step. We're ready to start prepping the SMB airbox and we're going to start by installing the tube seal. Next, you're going to install the foam filters and secure them with the foam retainers. Install the front inlet onto the front of the airbox and use the provided push rivets to hold it in place. Now it's time to decide whether or not you want to install your optional silicone box plug. For maximum airflow, you want to leave it uninstalled, but if you live in dusty conditions or extreme heat, you're going to want to install it. Install the grommets onto the airbox. Carefully install the SMB airbox into the vehicle. You want to make sure that the grommets don't fall out. And then you'll secure it down using the hardware that you had removed earlier. Slightly bend the AC service port so the cap is in line with the seam of the coolant reservoir. Before reinstalling the positive cable, we're going to swap the tightening mechanism to the other side.
By moving the tightening mechanism to the other side, this will allow you to pull the positive cables as close to the battery and away from any hot or moving engine components. And once you've done, done that, you'll torque it down to 80 pound inches. Once you're done with that, you'll torque this one down to 80 pound inches as well. Reinstall the positive cable cover and then zip tie the cables together to keep them away from any hot or moving engine components. And you also want to make sure that you have enough clearance right here to install the tube. Now you're going to remove the mass airflow sensor from the stock air box so you can transfer it over to the SMB intake tube. Install the adapter and the foam gasket. And when installing, make sure this is facing forward. Install the coupler and the hose clamps onto the SMB intake tube, and you're just going to want to make sure that it's flush. Install the intake tube in this direction, and then rotate it until the coupler is flush with the turbo. Once it's flush, you can then slide the coupler over the turbo inlet and tighten down the clamps. You just want to make sure that the clamp screws aren't touching the coolant line, and if it is, you can adjust it. Reinstall the rivet that you removed earlier to secure the front inlet. Now you can install your filter into the air box and onto the intake tube and then tighten down the hose clamp. Install the lid seal into the groove. Grab your clear lid and remove the protective layer from both sides. Install the lid using the provided hardware. Install the mass airflow sensor extension harness and remember to engage both red locking tabs. Reinstall the negative terminal on the battery and torque this down to 80 pound inches. Don't forget to reconnect the negative terminal on the driver's side and torque to 80 pound inches. Group together any loose wires such as the mass airflow sensor extension harness and the ground cable using the provided zip ties. All right guys, so that's it. So this intake kit has an increase in airflow of 55.97% over stock, while still maintaining a 99.56% efficiency rating. So if you have any other questions or you just want to know more, you can always give us a call or chat us in at the bottom of our website, and I'll see you next time.